How's it going everyone? It's Ronan and today we're going to be going over a, uh, a mix down. Uh, this is an original track I have here and we're going to be specifically focusing on mixing bass lines um, because uh, they are really hard to do especially when you're starting out. You either feel like you have way too much bass and it's just completely overbearing or it's just too little and you can't hear it at all. Um, and this is a real problem because a bass uh, sonically enhances a track whether you hear it there or not and honestly that's the most important thing to keep in consideration when you're starting the track what is the bass line to the track so what I mean by that is if you have a dubstep song for instance or uh, you know the dubstep bass is usually uh, pretty prominent in the track um, you're gonna want that to stick out it's gonna be more of the lead feature of your song Whereas this track that I have running here, um, it's more of a progressive house sounding type of track. And I don't want the bass to necessarily kill everything else and just come right through. It's just meant to be there to sonically en enhance the song. So without further ado, let's, let's take a listen to this track. I'm just going to play the first, like, I don't know, 30 seconds here so you get a gist of it. Okay, now honestly, I think that sounds pretty awesome, but uh, the problem is we were absolutely clipping the hell out of Ableton uh, if you were watching the master track down here, and that's a huge no-no in any mix down. Uh, you always want to leave some headroom so that way the mastering engineer or yourself, whoever's doing mastering, uh, if you do mastering, uh, has some room to work with. So keep that in mind. Usually keep it around negative six dBs on the uh, on the master track when you're done with your mix down. So let's go into this. So basically, I have let's see here one two three. I have seven seven tracks in this right now. It's uh, pretty minimal, not a busy mix, I would say. But there are a lot of meshing frequencies. So like the kick drum and the bass, for instance, are both in the low end of the spectrum, and you have to keep that in mind that they're going to be clashing with each other and that's part of the reason why we have this clipping is all these frequencies are trying to pump out at zero decibels because I haven't done any sort of mixing yet all I've done is just added effects so like on this synth right here I've just added some reverb delay and uh, sidechain compression to pretty much everything else I, I don't think I have too much on it yeah so like this bass line just sidechain compression so that's what I like to do. I like to just, you know, write my melody, you know, get it out of my head. So like, for instance, here we go. Here's my bass line. All right, great. There's the notes. Um, write it down, put the track together, how I want it to sound, and then add the effects. As soon as I'm done adding the effects, that's when I start getting into the serious mixing. So what I like to do first is I actually start with the bass line usually. So I, I will take um, any sort of EQ device. So like for instance, I'm going to start with uh, Ableton Spectrum. But if you're like in Logic, um, I know the EQ, the visual EQ is great. Um, I'm not too sure about any other softwares, but every software has some sort of visual EQ thing. So let's start with the bass. We have a Spectrum on it now. So we're just going to kind of take a look at the bass. Let's just solo it out and take a look at it. Alright, so we can see that we're hitting really hard around 100 hertz to like 80 hertz. So like somewhere in this range is where I would say we are really hitting um, our peak frequencies for this bass. And uh, before I clicked it out there, you could almost see it rolled right off and it just kind of just gradually like a hill just grew to 100 hertz. Now I guarantee if we were to look at this other, this top synth, which I have a spectrum on already, I'll just solo this one out. And I guarantee you'll see that this one doesn't have nearly as much power in the low end. And instantly, you can see it. It's visually clear. 
it's almost the opposite. It kind of rolls up a little bit past 100 and then it really hits hard uh, in a pretty wide range actually from about 400 to 1,100, 200. So it's a pretty good range. Um, it's a mid-range synth, so it's hitting pretty hard in there. So what do we have to do about this? Basically, what I always do is I take an EQ, and I love Ableton's EQ8. So I'm just actually going to take uh, this filter here, uh, number 8, and we're just going to kind of roll off some of the high ends. I'm going to go to about, uh, let's say, 2800 hertz. Because I want to keep a little bit of brightness too, but at the same time, I, I also want to limit out a lot of the high end. So, basically what we've just done is kind of captured the low ends in this little snippet of the, um, the spectrum, the frequency spectrum. Now we're just going to kind of do the exact same thing to this synth up here, the, the, one, the more mid-range synth. But we're going to do the opposite, we're going to go the other way. We're just going to kind of roll this one up to about... 350 I would say 350 Hertz something like that so now as you can see we're gonna have a lot cleaner sound because we have one going one EQ for the bass filtering out lower ends and we have one for the synth filtering out higher ends it's an easy way to allow uh, some breathing room in your mix because you have all these clashing frequencies and especially at like around a thousand hertz, it just gets really, really messy. So that's one simple way to do it. We're going to kind of move along here. We're going to go into the kick, actually, because that's also really heavy into the bass section. And we're just going to, we're going to look at where this kick is hitting. Ah, if I can find the spectrum, there it is. Alright, let's just take a look at where this kick is hitting. Again, really low, but I would say it's a lot more subby, um, sub bass frequencies than the uh, the bass itself. So we're hitting around, I would say, 60, you know, around 40, but you're not really going to hear that too much. Okay, so with the kick, so we see it's at around 60 hertz is where we're gonna we're gonna call it. Uh, what I usually do is go through back into the bass now, and actually do something that is called notch EQing and I know Ableton has a really nice feature for this on um, on their EQ but this can easily be done on any on any uh, EQ plugin we're essentially just going to literally cut out uh, 60 Hertz on this bass but you don't want it to drastically cut out so we're gonna actually bring in the Q value pretty high. I would say around 7, maybe even 8. We've just notched in a little um, basically frequency drop at 60 hertz. Now if you're not totally willing to completely give up that frequency range, you can just do a decreased amount at 60 hertz. So something like that where it's just a little, you know, little roll off at 60. And that's going to help bring in the kick drum so you get that subby bass that's underneath the kick. And it's also going to allow the the real bass line to breathe um, because you don't have way too much sub clashing each other. You're just letting the kick do its job coming through the mix and uh, letting the bass do its job around uh, 100 hertz. Now, further from that, you can go into uh, doing some more advanced EQ, just do exactly what I did, just going in and visualizing where the sounds are in, the, in their own respective uh, frequencies on the spectrum. And then just boosting or dropping accordingly. What I found in my years of mixing is to try not to boost as much as you can. That's a deadly it, well, it can be a deadly mistake because you get into the habit of boosting everything and all of a sudden you realize that you're clipping again. You have no idea why. And um, it's probably because you've been boosting on all sorts of things. So I, I know in a lot of my early mixes, I would start 
um, by, oh, I gotta boost the bass frequency. This, I, I gotta, you know, at 100 hertz, there we go, yeah. That's gonna cut through the mix really nice now. Well, not necessarily, because if you just, for instance, do what we did up here with this synth, cut it out at 100 hertz, and do the, uh, do the same thing with the bass down here, kind of roll it off in the higher ends, then essentially you're doing the same thing as boosting, it's just that you're not actually putting any more gain into the master. I hope that makes sense. Uh, it's a little tricky to explain. I would really start with your EQ and then after that you know we'll move on and uh, start messing with the, uh, the DBs and the uh, panning. So I hope this tutorial helped. I hope it made some sort of sense. Uh, it's a little hard to explain myself and what I do but um, I hope it helps. Alright thanks guys.